Ladies and gentlemen, federal employees, welcome to this episode about what the first year of retirement is going to look like for you, the big milestones that you can expect or shouldn't expect, right? And the real time frame that, will, that things will probably look like so you can at least have the right expectations because we all know the root of all unhappiness is expecting one thing and getting something else whether it's in relationships or retirement, whatever it is, if we expect something to be better than it's really going to be, that is a um, not a fun situation, right? So let's dive right in. Again, you're getting a sneak peek here. This is actually before this article goes onto the website. If you want to see the full article now, just go to HawesFederalAdvisors.com. There's a place for the blog. You can find all our articles right in there. This article will be a part of this. Long story short, there's going to be this document here that walks you through all, it's basically a diagram. If you're on the podcast, you're not seeing this, but it walks you through the main things, the main milestones in retirement. And I'm going to talk you through all the way through it here in this episode. Now, if you're new here, my name is Dallin Hawes, a financial planner serving you guys as federal employees, helping ensure you have the answers and information to retire comfortable and confident. There's tons of great resources in the description below that will help you do just that. Let's start with step number one. Step number one is you have to submit your retirement application. So we're actually starting the timeline months before your actual retirement, okay? So you submit your retirement application, and this really varies by agency. I've seen some agencies, HR, say, hey, I don't want to see your retirement application until two months before your retirement. Some people, some agencies will take it up to six months before. It just depends. So talk to your HR and ask them, hey, when can, when can I submit my application to you for the first time? And they'll give you a, a time basically um, backed up from your retirement date, and that's when you should submit it based on what they tell you. But usually it's between two to six months. Now, you retire. That's the next step. You hit your retirement date, and you're done working, which is incredible to have life on your terms. You can do what you want. You wake up when you want. That's incredible. However, the process is still very much in the works of your entire retirement. You're not going to work, but there's a lot of things still happening. For example, your HR is going to be doing things like transferring your life insurance and your FEHB, your health insurance, to OPM because they're the they're the organization that's going to be managing those things for you once you're retired. Right? They're moving that over. Also, your payroll office is doing a bunch of things. They're getting a lot of, a lot of documents about your salary, about your career, to OPM as well. So OPM can then start processing your application. Also, your payroll office is doing things like cutting your last paycheck, cutting your um, annual lump sum or your annual leave lump sum payment. If you have any unused annual leave on the books, they're doing all that stuff right in the background. Now, one of the first things that does happen in retirement is you do get that pump, that lump sum payment for annual leave. However, sometimes this happens very, very quickly, right? In, you know, the first pay period or the second pay period of retirement, sometimes it could take a little longer depending on how quick your payroll office is. Most of the time it's pretty quick, but just know that um, sometimes it can take up to um, a handful, maybe two, three pay periods um, from retirement. So you got to have some cash, of course, to fill that gap. If you're expecting a large annual lump sum payment, and I'm not going to dive into the details here, but taxes do have to be paid out of that. So you're not going to get the entire amount that you might. It's You're not going to get the roast amount. You're going to get net after all taxes are paid. Okay. Step number four. So once your HR, your, your payroll agency, once all all your paperwork has been sent to OPM, then the OPM is going to say, hey, look, okay, we have everything for, you know, John Smith's retirement package. Perfect. Let's go ahead and send John Smith his CSA. Basically, it's a civil servant retirement number. It's basically a number that anytime you communicate with OPM, they're going to want that number to make sure, okay, this is John Smith we're talking to. It's him. He's the right person. So they're going to send you, it, it has happened in the mail. They may be changing their systems. I'm not sure um, based on when you're listening to this, right? But some version, they're going to get you a letter or something with this number in there. And it will then allow you to make an online account to be able to track your progress of your retirement application as everything gets done and gets approved. So that is the next step. And normally that can take four to eight weeks, depending on how OPM is doing, how quickly you're your HR gets them all the information, right? I, I had just a client recently where his HR had accidentally misfiled his application. So there was a massive delay in his HR even sending everything to OPM. Um, and so OPM hadn't got it and it had been some months. So um, you want to make sure if there's been a delay, if it's been maybe some months and you haven't heard anything, you want to reach out to your HR and say, hey, 
as everything is sent to OPM, is it still good to go? And they'll be able to walk you through and tell you where it's at. And once it gets to OPM, then you'll be able to get your, your um, CSA, your number, and be able to track things online from there. Okay, so now this, this the next one does surprise a number of people. Gaining access to your TSP. Some people expect that once they retire, boom, they'll have access to their TSP funds right away. And that's true and not true. So once you're retired, yes, technically, yes, you can get into your TSP. However, the TSP doesn't know you retired for a good amount of time. Your payroll office has to let them know, say, hey, John Smith is now retired. He can now access this TSP and take withdrawal. So it could take normally about six weeks, six weeks to be able to get into your TSP and so that they know, hey, he is retired. So Again, you want to have cash in the meantime, because if you're planning, if you have zero cash in your bank account, your savings account, and you're relying on your annual leave lump sum payment and getting access to your TSP ASAP, well, what if there's a delay? What if there's a delay and you don't get it, though, get access to those funds for some time? You, you may be uh, putting on credit cards and things that are no fun, right? So you want to make sure you have some cash to fill the gap. Okay, next is interim payments. So the moment OPM kind of gets your entire retirement, retirement application, they're going to do some very rudimentary just checks like, okay, it looks like he can, he's, he's able to retire. We're going to start paying him a partial payment of his pension um, so that he has something to live off of before we actually finalize and adjudicate. They call it adjudicate is the word they use. Basically finalize your retirement application and start paying you your entire pension, 100% of your pension. So basically this normally starts within four to 12 weeks of your actual retirement date, you're going to start receiving these partial payments. And, you know, it varies between 60 and 80% of what your pension is going to be. It's normally right around 75%, but it's right in that ballpark. So long story short, it's not going to be your full pension. And these interim payments do not include your first supplement. If you're eligible for the first supplement, it's not going to be paid until your application is actually finalized. So you definitely have to keep that in mind as well. Again, it's going to take four to 12 weeks for these interim payments to actually start at all. So you need to have some money um, ready to go to fill the gap until at least that starts. Right? Okay, step number seven. Hey, your case is finalized. That is a great place to be when OPM said, hey, yep, you're good to go. We're going to start paying you your first supplement. We're going to um, give you your full pension. And now, as you might have noticed, there's been some months where they didn't pay you the full pension or maybe the first couple months where they paid you zero. And what they're going to do is they're going to back pay you for everything they missed, but they're also going to take, of course, taxes out and, and paying for your life insurance and health insurance. They're going to take all that out and then pay you the lump sum of whatever's left for what they missed during the time. So normally, I mean, these are just averages, but normally it takes between three to six months for everything to be finalized and your full pension and everything to be paid to you. So again, keep that in mind. You need some cash on the side to get through this time. I've heard it taking a year, right? And people ask, hey, how can I make this process go quicker? And really, one of the biggest levers you have is just make sure your retirement application is correct. You've submitted all the documentation you need to. Um, everything's there. And if you've done that, hey, that's the best you can do. And there's not, you can't control everything. You can't control how busy OPM is. You can't control you know, how many other retirees or, or federal employees are retiring at the same time as you. You can't control some of those things. So, but what you can control is having cash, right? To fill in any gaps that you have and to make sure your application is squared away. Now, a couple things. Again, cash is king. You definitely want cash just to be ready to go. Now, there's one thing that most people don't talk about, but long story short, what happens, let's say during your career, you had dental insurance, business insurance, life insurance, health insurance, how are those premiums getting paid when you're not receiving a pension for some months and maybe not getting your full pension for six months or seven months? How are those premiums getting paid? And is there a, a gap in coverage during that time? It's a great question. So your different insurances actually work differently. So your life insurance and health insurance, you're automatically, your coverage is going to continue. And once your full pension kicks in, boom, they're going to, they're going to automatically take out whatever premiums you missed. There's going to be no gap in coverage automatically, assuming you're eligible to, to keep those into retirement and you elected to keep those into retirement. Now, for your dental, your vision, and your long-term care, it's that's not the case, right? It doesn't automatically take care of it for you. So if you want to maintain those, those coverages in retirement, you actually have to reach out to the um, the agencies that, that provide those. For example, benefits for um, your vision and dental 
and then LTC feds, these long-term care feds for your long-term care. So you want to reach out to them and say, hey, I'm retired. I want to pay these directly until my pension kicks in and you'll be able to do that. So there's no gap in coverage. So that is a, a outline for your first year in retirement. Again, these are just averages. For you, it could be a lot quicker. I've heard some success stories of, hey, things have gone really, really smooth and quickly. It could be longer. So you have to prepare. You've got to be ready to go financially have the cash you need to be able to be okay. So if, if there's anything, maybe you just retired. If there's anything that you say, hey, I want to make sure other people retire who know this, please put in the comments below on the YouTube channel that helps us all get better, grow, and learn together. So I hope that was helpful. Have an incredible rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.